This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. So I'm getting ready to quench my broadsword. It's about three feet long and I'm going to heat it up to cherry red. But I need something to quench tank. So I took some drier vent tube and turned it in on itself, turned it, turned it over, and then crimped it with my pliers. And now I'm going to cut the top so it's open, and it'll act like a trough for my oil. But I figure it's kind of cool because it's somewhat um, adjustable. You can make it longer for a longer weapon. And also, it is uh, something that won't catch on fire, and it's super cheap. And you just got to figure out a way to support it on its sides and fill it with oil. It should be a good quench tank. Just use scissors to open it up all the way, and put it in some water and make sure that um, it'll uh, hold hold the water it's watertight. I'm just going to open this up a little bit more. Got to cut open, kind of bent back upper lip to give me some room to put the sword in. And I'm just going to make sure that uh, it's sealed pretty good here at the end. Just using pliers to fold it over on itself. Hopefully that will create a watertight and oil tight crimping. This one's a little bit open. So, <clears throat> just kind of folding it over on itself. And one, one thing I'll have to figure out is some way to keep this um, vertical, some way to support it. I want to see if it'll hold water now. I got it suspended here between two things. Add a little water in here. Let's see if we get any leaks. When I put the blade in, uh, I'm mainly trying to heat treat the ha or the about maybe an inch up on the sharp where I'm going to be sharpening it and hardening it. So I don't need to fill this all the way with oil. I want to actually keep the spine, the Lucaso and the tang uh, a little bit softer so they're not brittle. But I need to have the hosh uh, hardened so I can sharpen it. So got a little leak right here. Got to check that out. Try the other side. <coughs> Pretty good. We can see that it is long enough to take the entire sword, which is good. So I put the sh the hard part in and let that just sit. That's going to do great. Just got to make sure I take care of this leak here on the end. Put a little bit more of a bend in my broadsword so it's a little bit more of a saber. It's too straight at this point. So I got it heating up. Turn down the flame. And use a little momentum trick.
Get a little hotter. We'll go ahead and do the heat treat. We're gonna get this heated up evenly. Got our trough set up to oil. Just gonna go kind of back and forth with this to get it evenly heated. And during the daytime, it's a little bit hard to get the color exactly right, but you're just going for cherry red. If you go in there too hot, it's a bad idea because you can actually uh, cause some weakness in the steel. If you don't go in there hot enough, then it won't hold an edge. So it's definitely a happy medium. It tends to be when it's dark enough, you can tell cherry red. A little more of a bend there, it looks good. Swing back like a saber. Good. Just gonna make sure it's straight. See a lot of people do wrong with heat treat is they uh, get it to a good temperature, put it in oil, and they take it out right away. So they want to see if it's straight, which makes sense. But if you leave it in the oil, it's going to be able to cool off, and the molecules are going to line up, and you're going to get a really hard steel. But if you keep putting it in the forge and then cooling it more than a couple of times you'll create some really actually brittle steel that won't take impact so everything's getting a little bit cherry red now we're almost there Just trying to share that heat pretty long sword Keeping it vertical, nice douse. So we used probably uh, one full jug of the Wesson oil it was enough to um, fully sink the whole sword. That's good. And I just want to leave it in there. And then once this is nice and cool, get it dried off. And then uh, take it to the grinder. Get a nice edge on it, nice profile. Coming out of the oil, we look good, no warp, <coughs> nice and straight. <coughs> so I'm actually going to let it sit in there for a while. Keep it vertical. So the broadsword turned out nice and straight and no warp, luckily. I think uh, sometimes when they're put in too hot, more likely to cause a warp, but this one went in just cherry red. So nice and hard on the cutting edge, file skated across. Hopefully this will be helpful for you to get your sword heat treated. 
And thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe when you get a chance and we'll send you some more videos on forging and fire. Thanks again.